back in time to 1980 copyright 1980 I'm not sure how long this fly was around before 1980 but we're gonna hit some classics with the uh, old Jack Dennis Western Trout volume uh, two one we might do some stuff with volume one later but uh, given the season this is the volume that had all the the big cool Western stone flies and this uh, this round we're gonna do the Jacqueline salmon fly um, awesome fly. Uh, fished it for a long time before um, you know all this new foam stuff came out um, but really really fun fly. Uh, I've got a 2x long size 6 and I'm using heavy thread uh, right now or actually in this whole fly. Uh, this is 240. You could use 3 aught. You could use you just want it thick because you want it to show up kinda of through the body if you will. So I've created a thread base all the way down and then back up. We really, you need a thread base here because the body material being dyed mousse is going, will want to spin otherwise. And then leave yourself a bit of a gap up front because we're going to be doing a bullet head and there's going to be kind of a lot going on up here. So leave yourself, you know, about a third of the hook shank. The body is orange dyed mousse. If you can find elk long enough, go ahead and use elk, but I haven't found any. It, it's really hard to find elk this long. So uh, we're going to go moose uh, just because you can see how long this stuff is. And this has to be like one of the first um, extended body dry flies out there. I mean, 1980 to be doing bullet heads and, uh, and extended bodies was pre I mean, pretty revolutionary. There's some some really amazing brains um, in our in our history of fly tying. Um, some just really good pioneers and and just really good thinkers about this. Um, you know, all the the whole Jack Dennis crew with La Fontaine and Mike Lawson and all those guys. Um, all his inspirations and in writing these books. It's it's incredible. You know the brains behind some of these people and how they thought. Uh, I'm really good at copying other people's stuff, but uh, I'm nowhere near the, the level of, like, you know, thought like these guys are. So, anyway, uh, throw this on top. Take a couple wraps, pop it down. And I did not stack this because it's easier. It's long enough, it'll be fine, but it's stacking hair this, this long is just a pain anyway. But... Um, I wanted the butts even more than I really cared about the tips being even on this guy. And if you're wondering, this is the Regal Shank Vice, so you can even tie like bigger trout flies. This thing's really universal. Alright, so bring all your hair back. We're going to kind of encompass the hook here. Right back, creating our body. Bring it behind. And the beauty about having this long hair is you can hold it. You know, you've got a handle here. Um, brown thread would work good on this as well. Do one more. You can make this kind of as long as you want. Okay, now bring it. You know, depending on what size uh, salmon fly you're imitating. Okay, bring it all the way back forward, making kind of an X. Okay, bring it all the way forward. Pop your finger. Bring all of this up front.
Okay. Now, do that same thing, except now you can kind of fancy it up and make it nice and even. So, it will be a little bit of a chore now that you got a nubbin back there, but you can make it work here. Gosh, all right. Try it one more time here before I. All right, got her. Tight wraps. Now bring it forward. Now, with this butt section, it's going to be a little long. That's fine. Salmon fly wings are really long. Make a parachute, just like a three or four wrap parachute. And then fold it back over. Alright, we got our wing and a ton of thread. For our overwing, I'm using natural elk. And we can find, you know, almost all elk hair is going to be fine in this length. You can, they, they, Nature Spirit has a really good selection of, uh, it's called salmon fly elk, you know, but it's it's basically selected really long, nice elk hair for, for tying stonefly and maybe it's stone, maybe it's stonefly. Um, I can't remember, but I'll link it in the description. But uh, it's perfect stuff for this because it's really long, it's dense, it floats really well, uh, and it's really tough. This stuff here I got is not that because... I felt guilty. We don't have a ton of it in the shop, and I felt guilty taking one for the video. So I'm just using standard elk. Alright, measure our length right on top. Give some good wraps. Wrap through it. You can see when you wrap through it, it all splays out. Okay. Starting to look like a like a bug for the bullet head on these. The uh, original patterns call for deer hair, so I will use natural deer hair. You can use gray if you want. So the a lot of the the pictures you see are natural. The recipes are gray, and I imagine back in eighty. Um, you know, we're pretty fortunate to have everything we do now that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are dying their own stuff. I mean, if you wanted, if you wanted a color, you had to, you know, get the writ and figure out how to dye. So, all right, we got our deer hair. I'm going to stack that. We've got a good little clump here. Now, there's two ways to do the bullet head. I uh, wonder what fell. Um. You can measure length and then cut it and then spin it in, which is what I'll do. Or you can spin it and then cut. But So for length, we've got, we want to figure out our length of head here. You can use your scissors if it's easiest. Use your head length. So we got this that we need and then a collar. And you can make the collar as long as you want. I usually go about halfway um, back for the collar so 
I like to use the points of the scissors almost like a compass and you can just measure and so we're gonna be right in this area here so I'm gonna cut it I'm just gonna give her a whack be careful as you change hands Okay, one loose wrap, one full loose wrap, kind of bring it tight, and then on your second wrap, it'll spin like that, and I got the collar a little too long, that's fine, it's still manageable, so what we'll do is we'll just come down and clip these off. What, what's easiest to do if you make this too long is if you just pull this hair forward and I use the back of my scissors to push the deer hair down and then the short stuff is just left for me to cut. If you pre-cut it a little shorter this works. If you don't pre-cut it then you gotta go through and it takes a little bit more time. Okay. And then I like to go through here with a few more thread wraps. And you can always see too, if you're wondering where you're at in relation to the eye of the hook, you can just pull it back and just kind of see. If if you've got too much of a hook gap here, then you know when you you can make some wraps forward to kind of clean it up right if you pull it back and there's a ton of hook showing just pull the deer forward and make a couple wraps forward and then that will clean it up and then if you have um, oh real quick and then move your thread back to where the wing sits stick your finger in there and bring it back and what I was gonna say is if, if it's really crowding the eye, you can just take your fingernails and usually just pop it on the eye and it'll push everything back a little bit. So while holding this pretty firm, I've triangulated, I've, uh, triangulating my uh, fingers here and I'm just pulling it all back. When it's tight, make a wrap. And then you can use a whip finish if you want. I'm just going to do a hand whip finish. Do two. And then the original, they didn't clip. They didn't clip the bottom, uh, which is fine. If it works great. Uh, you know, before like rubber legs got real popular all your deer hair here this was the legs I mean this is why this worked just equally as well really because um, you can flare out this deer hair and it, and it, it, that's what mimics the stonefly legs kicking and actually as as the deer hair gets wet it's like less stiff you know so it really does a great job of Im imitating uh, stonefly legs so anyway the, the uh, Jacqueline salmon fly and we're doing a little kind of trip down memory lane here some of the flies that I grew up fishing a bunch of, I mean, volume two of the Western Fly Tying Manual. I I can't believe, I mean, I wore the pages out of that thing. Um, read the stories over and over and over. Um, so some of the older books really have a lot of sentimental value to me. And uh, the flies are just really cool. And it's kind of neat to just be able to pay homage to some of the people that paved the way. So anyway, uh, Jacqueline Salmonfly, and thanks for watching.